And we're back with some more oxygen not included. Maximum difficulty on Badlands. Well, with care packages. Now, it was pointed out to me quite a lot in the comments that I completely missed this uh, vent geyser when we were we were playing the last day. I, I know I was supposed to go through and get them all, but I, I missed that one, definitely. Uh, there was also some pointing out that there's another one down here as well, but that's a, that's a volcano. You can tell because it's surrounded by igneous rock. Uh, and there's one over here as well, same thing, surrounded by igneous rock. So that's another volcano too. We've got plenty of volcanoes to play around with. But let's see what this one has in store for us. I'm still holding out hope we're going to get a polluted water source on this map. Jason and Eleanor both have a digging skill of 27. Well, excavation. Plus 11 from basic skills, 10 from atmos suit, 2 from super... Well, hard two, plus 2 from all those. That is 675% digging speed. It just makes uh, mining out the entire map so much simpler. Uh, let's see what we got here. We have chlorine gas vent. Okay, never mind, never mind. Um, oh, there's a, a hot polluted oxygen vent around here somewhere. Where was it? This piece of chunk over here. We are going to hook up some deodorizers to that. And we are going to de uh, deodorize the oxygen so we can get more clay. So we'll have to cool it down first so it doesn't uh, cook the clay. Cook it. Well, cook the uh, clay into dirt, which would be bad. Now, next up, we were going to put through our hot industrial brick. However, there's a small change in plan. I realized, yeah, we want to start tapping into this gold volcano now. Gold is incredibly valuable on this map because it's not on this map. So if we could tap into that now and start uh, getting our hands on that gold, it would definitely go a long way towards helping us. As you can see, this is not exactly one of the more complicated designs. Well, this is going to be two, a double liquid lock, and then we're going to seal up this side, and we'll have a vacuum in the middle. It'll all become clear very quickly, but uh, we're just going to dump in a bunch of water and let the water get the heat eaten by dumping a steam turbine on top. That's just going to be it. Though we do have to clean the mess out first, and I'm going to have to fill these up with crude oil. Uh, we got new printables available. Already have uh, pips. Don't care for anemic. And we have a new candidate that we are going to call... Derek. Say hello to Derek. Everything is Derek. Now, um, which reminds me, I also printed a few other people while I was doing a little bit of excavation in the background. Where is it? Uh, over here in between this episode and the last one, I excavated this out for our hot industrial brick, and I managed to find two duplicates to hire. Uh, the duplicates we hired were the judge, who is... Oh, one second. Squeamish, diver's lung... Binge Eater, Sparkle Streaker, and they have an interest in operating, so they're going to be a good machinist for us. Then we've got Mindy St. Clair, they're a suit bearing and operating, Biohazardous, Early Bird, Vomiter, and Sparkle Streaker, and then we have Derek, of course, who we just hired. And all of them right now, we're just dumping them straight into advanced research, and if we head back to the home base, we'll see that all of them should be heading right in here to get trained up on the generator. Oh, that reminds me, I need to set Derek's priorities, put them one up in operating so they make it makes sure they go in there. They're going to train up quite well, and we'll come back to them once they're fully trained. Now, if we look at, who is it, Sean? Sean actually has five points, so I could immediately dump him into Critter Ranching level one and get him exosuit training, but I'm going to get him up to six. I want his, I want everyone's athletics to be quite high before I let them out, so right now they're only at ten. Uh, everyone else is, yeah, around that mark. I could probably let them out right now, but I'm going to let them go a little bit further before I do. We've got the resources, we've got the food, we've got the water, we've got the oxygen. We might as well. Anyway, let's uh, let's finish this sucker off. We need to flood this whole area with a lot of water. Well, first we need to sweep it, and then we're going to flood it with about two tons of water. We're going to want to put a little vacuum seal in the middle of these two liquid locks. That will ensure there'll be no temperature transfer from in here out. It's not the biggest deal if we're running a hot map, but at the same time, I, there's no point letting uh, heat out where you don't have to. When it comes to the salt water I'm putting in here, uh, I'm just throwing in salt water because I don't have a lot of normal water, and I don't want to be wasting my normal water on... Well, stuff that's going to end up being boiled anyway. Which reminds me, we can get rid of that. We only need about two tons of water in here. Once we have two tons of water, we'll stop dumping some in. Right, we've got about two tons of water in there. You can tell because there's 500 kilos per tile and there's four tiles. Not exactly complicated uh, planning here on this design. One of the reasons I love this one. Now we're going to stick a steam turbine on top and the steam turbine is going to be self-cooling. Which means we're going to have to get some plumbing pipes, radiant... Ooh, we have lead and iron. What's the... Oh, we do have some copper. One second. Checking the properties here, what we're more concerned about is thermal conductivity. We want to be able to try and dump as much heat out of our wastewater as possible. Which, okay, that will probably become a little bit clearer in a bit. You know what, I have a tutorial on this. I'll link it up in the top right that kind of covers all of why I'm doing what I'm doing. 
Uh, but this one, we were just looking for the highest thermal conductivity possible. For iron, it's 110. For lead, it's a paltry 70. And for copper, which is over here, we got 120. So I'd like to use copper as the radiant pipes we're going to be dumping in here. And we do have some already, and I've queued up a little bit more to be ground up just in case. And then what we do is we run the copper radiant pipe like this. Uh, do we have enough? I think we should just about have enough. There we go. Now uh, this... Oh, this will mean that the wastewater coming out of this, which will be about 95, is it 90 or 95? I think it's 95C, will come out of here and then it will try and exchange heat in the surrounding area before eventually being dumped down into, right back into the, ah, into the gold volcano area. This is important. We want to try and squeeze out as much of that temperature differential as possible. And we've only got five degrees to work with. It's tiny. But if we do it just right, then what should happen is... Well, the steam turbine will cool down itself, and we won't have to. So it just, just, it simplifies this down to, yes, we'll have some hot gold sitting down here in a steam room, but who cares if everyone's in atmosuits suits at this point. And done. The gold out of this volcano will pop out. It will cause the water down here to boil. The, boil, the boiled water will get eaten by the steam turbine. The heat will get destroyed, and a bunch of, and then the water will get dumped back down in here. The steam turbine will self-cool itself. Now, bear in mind, this is only possible with gold volcanoes. With a, an iron volcano, you need at least two steam turbines. Uh, in the tutorial, in the tutorial. Uh, then we've got this uh, vacuum lock in the middle. So we've got the liquids on either side, which means no gases can get in or out. And then this is a complete vacuum, as in perfect insulator. So what'll happen is, while this may end up being, you know, 150 or 120 degrees or whatever it gets up to in here, this should remain nice and cool, meaning the heat from in here shouldn't be able to leak out. Well, whatever heat can leak out that tile to get transferred across, it's, it's minuscule. This should just be perfectly insulated. We don't have to worry about it, care about it, or do anything with it. Which reminds me, we can now demolish the little power supply I put in to uh, get the gas pumps up and running. And done. I've actually put a power output on this, though. Honestly, these things generate very little power. I'm not even sure if I'm going to hook that up to my main grid just yet. But I'll leave the option there for future, just in case we do decide that we want to. Oh, and while that was going on, I uh, this is the top of the base, the inside base where no one wears uh, exosuits. But over here I dug in it so that we could gain access to the salt water pit to grab that salt water out of there. It was kind of necessary. Now, now it's time to put together our hot industrial brick. Now, let me think for a minute about where we're going to put everything. I don't know exactly how much space we want for this industrial brick, but yeah, let's, let's make more than we need and then worry about the, the consequences of that later. I've also stuck in some wheeze warts down here. It was pointed out by S. Black and Saturnus 35142, which shall be referred to forever as Saturnus the number, um, that if I put in a wheeze wart in there, it would help cool it down and stop with my uh, my plants getting stifled. The reason they're getting stifled so often is not to do with the machinery in here, it's more to do with the Drecos themselves. When they're born, they have a, a default body temperature that's quite high, and that heat out of them slowly leaks into their environment, and that's why this place is overheating so constantly. I thought once I got it down, it would be fine. I may want to invest in an active cooling solution for this later, but for the time being, a few wheeze warts should take care of the problem and should help get this back under control. Well, that and maybe a quick ice temperature shift plate. Ice applied, temperature restored, everything going along as normal. And then I queued up a little bit of things over here. <laughs> now, this is way too big. I don't need an industrial brick, uh, uh, an industrial sauna that this big. Namely because I'm not going to be running petroleum. We're not using any you know, natural gas or petroleum or fossil fuels. So all we're going to be sticking in here is heat producing machines. However, I always like to overbuild just in case. You never know what's going to happen in the future and what you might decide to do. So let's just do it now. At the same time, I'm putting in all the temperature shift plates right now because I've got the materials just lying on the ground. Right now, all of that stuff, all that granite, I mean, these are all temperature shift plates made of granite. There is just tons of the granite lying around here. If I finish off this building before putting in the temperature shift plates, I'm going to have to start carting the granite in here. This means, you know, that's effort. I can cut down the travel distance by just doing it now. So, yep, that's going to take a little bit of time. Just just a wee bit. Yeah, today's episode's going to be a little bit late going out the door, I think. This may have been... Uh, normal. I think, I think what's going on here is I'm used to having more duplicates at this point in the game. The whole ravenous hunger thing having to slow me down means I don't have as many skilled up dupes as I normally would at this point. Oh well, um, ooh, is that new printables? Let's see if there's many more dupes we can add here. Ah, another builder who can't dig, uh, a, a cooker who can't dig, definitely a no-no, plus seven to agriculture. Well, we're not farming, so, hmm, a couple of pip eggs. You know what? We'll take the pip eggs. There'll be an annoyance, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep them on hand. We'll find something to do with them. I've had to put Sean through the skill scrubber, reason being, Shona's got six skill points. So, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. Now we can dump them straight into Critter Ranching. Oh, Critter Ranching, Devil 2. Uh, the Judge is two points off, Mindy's two points off, and actually, what did Sean come out of Athletics? 14 Athletics after all of that. Well, they're getting a plus two buff from the Exosuit. So yeah, they'll be nice and fast and they'll be able to do their job quite well. Do you remember back in, well, a long time ago, and maybe a few episodes back, we made in this liquid reservoir so we could off-gas polluted water to make ourselves clay. Well, to off-gas polluted water to make polluted oxygen that would get deodorized with sand to make clay. Well, after all of that effort and time, what have we got to show for it? We have the ability to make 20 tons. We have 20 tons of clay, which will allow us to make 20 tons of ceramic. So, yeah, I'm going to call it a win. Let's throw together all that ceramic there. Uh, we're going to use that ceramic to make the metal refineries that we're going to use to refine all our metals in the future. The reason we need to make them out of ceramic is ceramic has a higher overheat temperature and we're running a hot industrial brick. We're going to need some ceramic. Next choices, and we've got another plus seven rancher. We we've already got three. Do I really want a fourth? No, no, I don't want a fourth. We've got three. Three is more than enough to take care of all of our ranching needs. Uh, narcoleptic and a loud sleeper. Uh, you know what? We don't care. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll skip all of that. We don't even want the muck root. We've got too much food as it is. This is uh, still continuing on a pace. I think I'm going to go leave this running and I'm going to go grab a cup of tea. One other thing I'd like to keep track of while all of this is going on is this is Michael, one of our first ranchers. And from hugging all the eggs that's been going on for well, almost 200 cycles, they've managed to gain two levels in animal husbandry, which is... It's incredibly slow to level skill. The only time they get any points in it is when they hug eggs. So right now, they started at 7 and they're up... Well, they started at 7 and right now they're up to 9. It's really, really slow to level and you have to pay the costs to actually run incubators. Well, you could hook up the timers and only activate the incubators for short periods of time, but I try and avoid that type of stuff. I, I, I'm going to pay the... If I'm going to dance the dance, I'll pay the piper, so to speak. And I'll, I'll pay the full cost. I just feel bad if I don't. Uh, what's happening over here? Oh... Yeah, I think we've actually filled up both these ranches, have we? Yeah, I might want to start getting rid of some of the old uh, the old reed fiber ones. We can get rid of the, uh, some of these Drekos. We don't need them anymore, and we can replace them with the new plastic ones. Considering the enormous amount of time it's going to take to build this, I'm going to invest into some automation to help speed things along for all my duplicates and cut down on labor requirements. One of the first things I did a while back was I put in a couple of uh, bins here for dirt. Those bins feed onto this transport rail and it means that all of these mealwood plants are getting fertilized automatically. Let's just cut down on some of the labor for my duplicates. Next up, I put a sand bin over here. This sand bin holds all the local sand and this fills up all of the deodorizers so that the deodorizers don't need to get topped up by duplicates. It can be topped up by this auto super instead. Now to make things even better, this loader here is going to hold clay. So all the clay from the local area will get dumped in there. Oh, I should probably power that as well, shouldn't I? That would be an idea. And then once that's powered, which if if I remind myself, just let's make that a level six to make sure it gets done. Once that's powered, all the clay will get shipped across and sent over here to get turned into ceramics. That should hopefully cut down on labor requirements, just so that my dupes have more time to build the enormous amount of temperature shift plates we've queued up. With all of that automation in place, we've... Well, not quite completely, but we've automated quite a chunk of the ceramic production. The only thing we haven't quite automated is when the, both these liquid tanks back up. But you know what? I can live with that. I, I like my funny alarm system, even if it is really intensely annoying. Oh, and by putting in these wheeze warts, I've blocked my access to the lower levels and I can't mop up the water down there. Not going to worry about it. Not just yet. I'll worry about it later if I ever have to put in more temperature shift plates and I potentially flood the plants. Uh, let's say. Uh, Let's move this along and I'll see if I can find any other automated things I can patch up in the background. Could not think of anything else to automate to make easier for our dupes, but we are up to 11 tons of ceramic, which, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. At the same time, where is it? Nope. Too many, too much jumping about. Ah, uh, yes. The volcano has started erupting, so we've actually got our hands on some gold already. How much gold is there? We've got 506 kilos of gold. You know what? I'm happy with that. Though we still have some salt water left. Is that about to erupt? Actually, let's have a quick gander at this, shall we? And there we go. All of it just hits the ground. Now, we're not even trying to save the heat. If we were trying to be saving the heat, we'd do something different. But for the time being... Oh, it still hasn't managed to evaporate enough to make the steam turbine turn. Never mind. We'll come back to that at a later date. But we've already got almost a ton of gold out of it. Which, on this map, that's incredibly useful considering there's no other sources of it. 
Ooh, cool steam vent. Yeah, I do need to get my hands on more water as well. And I need to cool it down. Right now, my only source of cool water is this. And all of that is being dumped into my toilets, which is then turning it into polluted water, which we're turning into oxygen to make clay for the ceramics. A lot of circular systems going on around here. Anyway, let's uh, let's continue with our stupidly oversized construction project that I should have waited until I had more duplicates to do. It's completed. Oh, new printables. What do we got? We got a pacifist with an iron gut. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. They've got building. You know what? We do need more builders. You can be Bombajan. So Bombajan has joined the payroll. We'll uh, immediately stick them into the gym. They should automatically go there themselves. But let's maybe uh, make sure their, sk or their skills get points gets assigned into advanced research priorities, get set up so that they go into the correct location. And then after that, maybe enable a few more of these buildings. Though I think I think we're fine for now. Uh, doors, yeah, all set up. We've made sure Sean can't get in. Eh, perfect. Another duplicate joins the fold. I think we'll stop at 14. Yeah, I have enough tables in my great hall for 14 dupes. So I think once we hit 14, we'll cut back at that point. Or we'll, we'll even out for a bit, at least until much later in the game. Or at least until this, <laughs> this gets finished. More printables for the printing pod. And yeah, I think we're going to go with Ran over here. Reason being, they've got Operating, which is always good, and suit wearing, which we put everyone into anyway, so why not? We will call them John Wheaton. Now, let's send them out there. They will also have to go in and get skilled up. I've uh, made a few minor changes here just to test something out. I'm not putting their priorities up. I'm still trapping them inside the base, but I'm not putting their priorities up to run on the wheel. And that should mean they run around and stock up the internal stuff like these, say, coal bins for the coal generators and things like that. I've even turned down the priorities on the chim wheels to three. They should still use them if there's nothing else to do, but if there is something to do, they should do it. I'll leave that as it is for a while and see how it works out. It might, it should mean that everything in here gets taken care of and should ease up the pressure on my other duplicates. For example, there's John there and they just, I think they just ground up some poke shell mulch or something like that. Oh, that reminds me, uh... Sedimentary rock. No, it was fossil to lime. Yeah, we've got the fossil to lime set up. There's 13 tons of that stuff left, so we should be able to get our hands on a lot of fossil, or a lot of lime. A lot of lime. We have 2,135 kilos of lime on the map with all of our grinding up of everything. And we still haven't even gotten into um, farming poke shell bolts. Where is it? Uh, yeah, I've been growing. I've been trying to grow more arbor trees. So the arbor acorn we started... The pips rummaged in it, got a new arbor acorn. They rummaged some more. We're up to four arbor acorns. Hopefully we can keep expanding that because I, I I, just don't have the polluted water to pay for those. That's the one downside so far of this map. We haven't found any polluted water sources and I don't think there is any on it, which means the only polluted water we're going to get is from our toilets, our sinks and our showers. We may have to start running showers just to get polluted water at some point. Though, not going to worry about that just yet. Getting so much closer to having this done, but at the same time... Our alarm system has gone off for this again. Now, there's several suggestions on how to uh, fix this. Like, I could just put this to, say, uh, say, put this to 98 and plus this to 99. And it should ping once and then stop. But I kind of like it. <laughs> I, I know that's weird, but it just makes sure I don't forget. Like, having your toilet system back up, that, that, is, that would got to be the worst, especially for the dupes. So I like making sure that it's 100% commitment from my end. There we go, back to 100%, 100%, just to make sure we definitely don't miss it. Uh, polluted water is off-gassing, st we've still got lots of clay coming in, which is kind of nice. Eh, how is our uh, industrial sauna looking? Getting there, slowly but surely. It's taking too long to get projects done is probably bad for my sanity, because I just want to start hiring more dupes to speed things along. Please welcome Val to the team. Val will be joining us, and that will take us over the 14 mark, so I had to stick in an extra... Uh, Mm, dining hall or great hall they will also be joining us down running on the wheel and all that but uh but they will be stuck inside doing their drug jogging and maintenance of the inside base until they're good for us to do anything with uh the judge has been skill scrubbed and then reassigned as a mechatronics engineer they're going to go out and help with the building mindy oh you know what mindy can now be scrubbed and sent out as a mechatronics engineer as well Derek is no, still a fair bit away. We'll get Mindy scrubbed up and send her out the door too. With Mindy scrubbed up, we will just stick her straight into mechatronics engineering and exosuit trading. Oh, we'll give her a new hat as well. And then once she's done with that, we're going to change all her skill settings too. 
sorry, that was meant to be priority settings. I get those two confused pretty much constantly. But yeah, going to specialize her in operating and with one in digging, building and digging. That's pretty much what I do with all of my mechatronics engineers. Then we're going to let them out the door. I've already banned them from going back into the gym. Done. That's someone else to help out with our stupidly oversized construction project. But soon, soon it will be complete. Well, would you look at that? It's more gold amalgam. Yeah, I, I can't say no to more gold amalgam because I can't get gold amalgam anywhere else. And with that, the final temperature shift plate goes in. Well, for now. I'm sure I'll find some ways I have to expand it. Now we just have to replace all the tiles with airflow tiles. Dear Lord, this is taking so long. <laughs> Sorry about this. I was really thinking this would be a little bit faster. Uh, how are we looking over here? Yeah, we'll have uh, one more load going there. But before I forget about that and accidentally let it overflow, Gold Volcano is doing amazingly well. How much gold do you have to? Seven tons of gold. Yep, that's kind of exactly what we're looking for. Let's have a, a quick see what it looks like in action. And gold comes out. Steam heats up, but because there's so much of it, it only heats up a bit. Steam turbine comes on. Water's coming out of this at 95 degrees, or 95C. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's 97.8. So it's man managing to whisk the heat that the steam turbine is generating away and self-cooling itself. Oh, just... That's what I love so much about this design. It requires so little to get it working, and it just tames an entire volcano, which used to be... I remember when I first played this game, taming a metal volcano was such a nightmare. Now it's like, nope, nope. Just put together this very simple, basic thing. There's not even, a, there's not even any automation involved in this. Only downside... Gold comes out a little hot. You know what? Pseudo duplicants don't care. Now, did I? Uh, yeah, I turned down some of the priorities on these so they wouldn't overflow. Oh, yeah, that, that worked out pretty well, actually. Well, I'll put everything back to normal. I'd better keep an eye on this or I will flood the map again. Due to the time it's taking, we've got more printables. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to take the shovel legs. I like shovels. We'll, uh, we'll add those to our collection over down here. Yeah, they're providing us with a nice little meat addition every so often now and then. I'd forgotten we'd already automated this, so... Yeah, the eggs just, just get dropped off here. I don't even have to look. That will be handy when we go into space, because when we go into space, any shovel eggs we encounter will also get dumped, dumped down there automatically. Anyway, back to, the, back to the grindstone. Let's get this sucker finished. And finally, the last of the bricks go in. Well, there's two more left to go, but that should be a nice clean room to get us started with. I'm going to vacuum out these center locations just so that we can prevent heat from escaping. And I've even put in some preemptive heavy watt conductive joint plates here. Their purpose is going to be if we want to run power in and out. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to run it in and out just yet, but we've got the options there if we need them. It'll give us a bit of a negative hit to decor, but we'll worry about decor a lot later from now. All right, well, time to start thinking about where we're going to put in our bits and bobs. I'm thinking we're going to get a refinement, our metal refinement on this level, close enough to the steam turbines that it can uh, quickly dissipate the heat. We are going to make sure to make these refine, uh, metal refineries out of ceramic. You'll notice regular materials just give you about a 75C overheat. This uh, gives you a plus 200. Like, if you notice down here, overheat temperature plus 200C because it's made of ceramic. That is really, really, really valuable. I nearly made it all the way to the end without overflowing one of the liquid locks. This one overflowed. I, I overflowed one liquid lock, just one. Ah, that is a huge improvement though. Normally I would have flooded half the map before I even realized, but I only, I only flooded one liquid lock and I caught it before it did a huge amount of damage. I mean, okay, I'm not looking for, for sympathy here, but that, that's an awful lot better than my usual mess ups. Uh, down here, what we're doing is we're installing a little uh, sealed joint plate so that we can get power at the bottom if we want. We're going to run power up the back of the map. And I suppose that since this is, well, since this is going to be just a, a regular hot brick, we're not going to put in the coal generators in there. They'd be spewing out carbon dioxide, which we don't actually want in there, which is going to be a bit weird. Instead, we're just going to put a massive coal array down here along the bottom of the map to power this whole monstrosity at the start anyway. This here will be what we'll use to at least start up the system, though once it's up and running, it will generally power quite a bit of itself. Well, maybe we'll have to see. I've never tried without using fossil fuels before. Well, okay, I know coal's technically fossil fuels, but without using coal, uh, crude oil, petroleum, natural gas, those type of ones. Coal we're definitely going to use a lot of for a while, at least until we get our geothermal sorted. Now, we need to fill up these cooling loops. The cooling loops on the metal refineries need to get some liquid going through them. Now, I could use crude but I don't want to use crude because crude's just not quite as good as petroleum, so we might as well go a little bit further and get some petroleum. And you'll notice there's some piping I've installed here. This piping goes all the way down and keeps going down, and yeah, we're going all the way down to 
Ah, damn it, that overheated already. I could have sworn that place was going to be cold enough. Okay, we'll demolish that and we'll replace it with a steel one. And we're probably going to have to put down some coal arrays down here as well. You know what? What's the temperature like up here? Temperature here is perfect. We'll stick down a quick coal array to get this, this thing running too. I think probably one of my biggest break breakthroughs in this game came when I decided I was just going to build things big. As in, normally what I try and do is cram like all of these buildings really close together to cut down on wiring and piping and all sorts of things. After a while, uh, once I got my priorities sorted on my, my dupes so that they could run around and do things in a timely fashion, uh, at that point, it didn't really matter how big I built things. My, my food is pretty much sorted for a very, very, very long time to come. My water is still quite decent, and if I needed an emergency water, I could definitely sort that out. So right now, there's no rush. I've got all the oxygen I could ever want because it's all running out of this tank of liquid over here that we have just a stupid amount of. So I'm going to take my time and build the things the way I want them so that I'm not going back and replacing them five cycles or, you know, 50 cycles or a few hundred cycles later, which means I'm less likely to tear down my whole base and try and replace it, which is about the point you get tired and go, you know what, I'll just start another map. So if I got a piece of advice for you from this build would be, if you're going to build something and you've got food that's going to last you for a thousand cycles, oxygen that's going to last you pretty much indefinitely, all that stuff, then don't bother messing around. Just, uh, you know, take your time and build something stupidly oversized. It's it's far more entertaining, in my opinion. Anyway, we'll skip this forward a bit until we at least get the petroleum in, and then we can hopefully get one run of steel through this before I cut the episode short, and I am... Yeah, I, I'm not getting this out on time today, even close. I apologize in... after... in advance. No. Yeah, I, I apologize for not getting this out on time. It's just... I really did want to get a, at least one round of steel through our new refinery system. And the... The petroleum is topping up into our refineries to act as coolant. Well, heat absorption material, whatever way you want to look at it. That should hopefully be just about done. Perfect, we'll cut those off. I don't want to put in any more. We'll just deconstruct those. Up the top here, I'm dumping in excess uh, salt water. So the brine, was it? Yeah, the salt water that we've got from our hot, solder, hot salt water vent. Yeah, we're going to get that and send that up. Now, one thing I need to be careful of here is that pump that powers the the salt water, that's powered by this whole self-powered oxygen maker. However, the self-powered oxygen maker might not be able to keep up with pumping that much water about the place. As you can see, the hydrogen's not backing up anymore. So I've stuck in a little bit of a power generator setup just to help top that up. I don't want that getting below, so we'll give that, say, 80-50. That should hopefully keep that going, just to keep that topped up while we fill up this area. Perfect. Now let's just get one quick run of steel through this. Iron to steel, yes. Uh, we'll just do one just to see how it goes. That should just dump out a bunch of hot petroleum that's going to go around here. It'll dump a bunch of seeds into the surrounding atmosphere, hopefully. And it should dump an awful lot into that salt water up there. We're trying to turn it all to steam. Do we have enough up there just yet? Mm. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just cut off the inflow of that just for now. And we'll see how the steel goes through this system. What we're really just concerned about is we're, we're going to be turning this entire room into a giant steam room. We just want to make sure... Where's it coming out at? 158. Oh, that's barely anything. Yep, chills down nice and rapidly. All the pipes are made out of iron, namely because it's just so plentiful we don't care. Boom, problem solved. Yep, this is going to be our steam room from now on. You know what, let's just set that to forever. Um, hmm, I think we'll cut that out there. This whole system is powered by these coal arrays down the bottom. We've got power coming in just on a big heavy wire made out of iron because we have buttloads of it relying around the map. I think we're ready to expand this. Next episode is just going to be all about expanding this, maxing out our steel production, maxing out all of the productions we can get. I'm also going to stick in a big row of batteries down here made out of steel once we get it all. And uh, then we can get on to poke shell, mass poke shell production so that we can start mass producing even more steel. There's an awful lot of iron on this map, which means we can make an awful, awful lot of steel. Oh, and let's just have a quick look at our consumable ores. How's our coal doing? 358 tons of coal. Ah, I love running hatches. I just love running hatch farms. Let's have uh, one other look as well. How is our manufacturing materials doing on plastic? 47 tons of plastic. Oops. Yep, uh, we'll just call that a big oops. And industrial ingredient, ingredient wise, we have 234 reed fiber. Yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying doing the build this way. It's much, much slower. We're a lot later into the game than we would be if we were, you know, going straight for oil and things. But I think that worked out quite well. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the start of our industrial sauna and uh, good luck.